What's going on guys? We got a round two best of three in the ITW uh, Rome 2 tournament here between Lil Mao and Bacchus and this is a uh, game one of the best of three where Lil Mao has taken Rome and Bacchus has our Verney. Let's get right into it uh, and immediately we can see quite an interesting build from Rome. Uh, they brought a skirmish build here kind of with three and two three. Uh So let's go through the builds here, we already know Rome's got something interesting, but uh, let's look at the Arburnia build. They got four Heavy Horse here, two Naked Warriors, uh, who will be definitely kind of vulnerable to those missiles that Rome has. Three Oathstorn though, which is very, very strong, of course. One Chosen Sword. Uh, we got three Levy Freeman here, three Spear Warriors, one, two, and three, and three Celtic Slingers. So very balanced build from Arburnia. Uh, they've got a little bit of everything. Their cab will be stronger than the Roman cab individually. They have also three elite spears or, you know, medium spears with cavalry counter tactics in support. So the cab fights will be very hard for Rome. We got the, the meat shields, of course, to allow these uh, great infantry to get their charges away. And if these infantry do get their charges, they are very, very dangerous. Now let's look at the Roman build. They actually have quite a strong infantry core, considering there are also six missile or five missile units on the field, two auxiliary spear archers, and three Blair slingers. But we also have three of Akadi. One armored legionnaire, or, uh, yeah, one armored legionnaire here, and two veteran legionnaires. So quite a strong uh, infantry force. Then we also have four equites and two uh, um, legionary cav there, and one legatus general there. So uh, Rome will have more cav than Arverni here, and maybe they can get around and get some recharges in. But the real problem for Rome is how do they just stop Arverni from just marching forward? Because these meat shield units here, these spears, will just prevent the uh, Romans from blocking the charge of these elite infantry, and when these infantry get their charge, they will be able to destroy these Avocadian armored legionnaires and, and veteran legionnaires, because, I mean, obviously Oathsworn is just a great, uh, great infantry unit. Uh, so Rome will need to give time for his archers to, like, focus down some of these better infantry units, but there are also three Celtic Slingers who can just be annoying and kind of force back the, uh, the Blericks and just chip damage them. Here, one heavy horse gets engaged with, uh, looks like two equites here. Uh, but there's also a spear warrior, and again, this spear warrior will eventually die to these, uh, to these Evocati. But it doesn't matter, they'll get a lot of kills here when they pop cavalry counter tactics. And now these Oathsworn just move into support. And again, another cavalry charge here. But these spear warriors will just absolutely maul these equites, and heavy horse are already better than the, the equites anyway. And if he tries to bring these veteran legionaries in to kill the spear warriors, well, then now an Oathsworn charges you in, in return. So it's very difficult for Rome to get anything started here. He needs to get, he needs to get out of here, and you can see he's trying to do that, but now he just gets caught in the rear, and it's getting very messy for, for Rome immediately off the start. He needs to retreat and give his uh, archers more time, but they need to start focusing down these blobs. Maybe especially here where this Oathsworn is engaged, because now this Oathsworn got a free charge into these Evocati and will just start mauling them. Like, when an Oathsworn gets a full charge into your infantry unit, like, there's nothing you can really do to save it in a one-on-one. -on -one. Like, Oathsworn are the best infantry you're gonna find for that kind of thing, so... Now there's a huge blob here, and there are better legionaries in here, and they will do a lot of damage here to these Spear Warriors, and even these Heavy Horse, and of course the Zelby Freeman, but these... This is already bad for Room, like, they've lost two cavalry units already. This one is, like, at half strength. There are three units here which are fine, and at least like some of his slingers and archers are getting fire into this blob. And this fire through the back of his own men though, so it's not going to be the best, but it will do a lot of damage. Meanwhile, this uh, Avocadia is just dead, it got also charged by a naked warrior, could have just charged in the back there, but I mean this is obviously going to be enough, and these spear warriors can just be pulled out, they don't want to die there. You can see also these Celtic slingers are getting great rear shots into these veteran legionaries, they're very cheap, but from the back like, they have enough AP damage where they will do eventually a lot of chip damage here. And you can see that these heavy horse are dying, uh, but they did a lot of damage to the Roman cav, and it's just a matter of like, can you get, can, can you catch these slingers, or can you just kill all the infantry before it's uh, before the slingers and archers have a, time, a chance to do anything? And you can see he's already running out of units to deal with this, and they're gonna get a great javelin volley in there for these Balearic slingers who are down to half strength, uh, and he's forced to deal with this with all these different units. These chosen swords get a good charge into this Evocati, but the Evocati will win this fight. Uh, if it's left one on one, and especially because these archers were focusing them briefly. Now this is uh, heavy horse is going to get killed off here probably by these uh, equites, but they will take a lot of damage, especially because these spear horse are still uh, spear warriors are still in the fight. And now Arverni is pushing forward like full heartedly on this flank. He does get another counter charge, but again now these oathsworn just get a free charge. Oh, they are blocked by this veteran or armored legionnaire there. But Rome's Rome's forces are running really thin right now. 
You can see this uh, Chosen Sword actually got demolished by Zephkali, but now an Oathsworn will just counter charge. Levy Freeman trying to come in here, and Oathsworn as well. And now these Levy Free can just push through here. And on this flank, I mean, these Spear Warriors should finish off these Equites. The props is a uh, Ariovistus General abilities, or whatever they're called. In. And it's going to give them a small, a small buff for now. But you can see that he's pushing the Romans into a circle, into here from all angles, and now there's a, a naked warrior free, he's gonna get a great charge and do a lot of damage to these Epicardi. These heavy horse are kinda dying here, which is not ideal, but they did kill off this equity. He does need some heavy horse in the late game though, to counter these uh, archers, because they will be uh, pretty damaging. The question is, will there be any infantry left? Because Arvernia has all this infantry left, and Rome has no melee units, I mean, there's nothing they can really do. These archers will just get, uh, get cornered eventually. And you can see, these Catholic Slingers are doing a really good job of just like, they're not getting a lot of kills, but they're just kind of focusing down targets and getting a few kills here and there. And every kill they get on, for example, any of these archers and slingers, is just going to remove their ammo. Now he's focusing down the general unit, and this will be a, a very annoying thing to do. And these uh, these two Epicali and Veteran Legionnaire, or Armored Legionnaire and Veteran Legionnaire, are going to do good damage to these uh, Oathsworn and will kill them off. So this is good, you'll have two units of infantry here. But other than that, there's no infantry left on the field for, for Rome, uh, because this unit's about to die. This unit's about to die, and over here, okay, this unit might survive, but there's units all around, and now these heavy horse are at 30 men, and they can get into these archers. You can see that's already happened over here, these Valerix things are going to die in these living freemen, probably. These guys are going to focus down, but there are just so many meat shields on the field for, uh, for our Verdi, that's going to be really annoying, because, like, look at this levy freeman can push back all three of these archers, and there's still so many units left. Now, this one cavalry is going to go here and kill these slingers, but it's just going to die eventually, I mean, like, it got javelin twice. And there's nothing really it can do. Yeah, we call these slingers, but it's hardly the, it's the least of Roman worries at the moment. Now, like, these archers and slingers are trapped. There's cavalry in the back lines. And there's nothing really Rome can do here. They definitely will lose this battle. Uh, they do have a few infantry units left, but, I mean, once, like, these Oathsworn win their fights and just kind of walk over here, they will be enough to, to win this. Only this Oathsworn did really badly. The other two Oathsworn uh, are fine. Like, these guys have 70 kills and only lost 7 men. And this Oathsworn has 115 kills for only 20 casualties, so very nice. Uh, they just had such favorable engagements, there was really nothing Rome could, could do to stop that, unless they had enough time to focus down these uh, units with the archers. But, uh, I've really just had, I think, a better build overall. Just with so many spears on the field, so many meat shields, and combine that with the power of the four uh, heavy horse, like, there was... It was really going to be hard for Rome to kill all that cab and allow time for the slingers to do to do their work, uh, which was definitely crucial. Uh, Rome here, yeah, I mean, with all these units left, there's nothing they can do, so. Uh, looks like Lil Mao would miss defeat there, and, and Bacchus wins pretty pretty handily. I mean, he did lose a lot of men. All of his cab was pretty much dead towards the end, but the wasn't the cab that was really hunting down those archers and slingers. It was eventually just, like, Levy, Freeman, and leftover... Uh, infantry units that were just kind of chasing them down. There's nothing they could really do to, to stop that, and so they weren't getting any focus fire off. So, uh, definitely a pretty good victory for Bacchus in that one. You can see the Roman Cav was just ineffective. I mean, these these spear warriors just did such a good job, and obviously the Oathsworn uh, just did enough killing off these Roman infantry who did get good kills, but it wasn't really against against the units that they needed to be getting kills against. Like they weren't getting kills against uh, any of the Oath Sword, really, except for this one unit that did die, and that Chosen Sword, which also kind of got slaughtered by another Kadi, but other than that, like, the the amount of meat shields was really helpful for everybody there. Uh, let's go to game two now. Let's find it here. Okay, so now Lulamal has Tillis, and looks like Bacchus has Gedai. Tillis can actually be pretty hard to play, uh, just because just because they have so few cavalry options, like, it can, if your raiding horse aren't really effective, it can be annoying. Now, raiding horse should be a pretty good counter to these bow horsemen, so let's look at the builds real quick. Looks like we got three armored spears up the middle here, and probably two spears, yeah, two regular cheapy spears there. Then we have two spear horsemen here, looks like that's the only cav besides these two raiding horse. And then we have probably, yeah, four noble swords there, and uh, two axe warriors. And these Axe Warriors are actually a great choice against Attilus because the Tribals, and even the Oathsworn, have great, uh, really high armor, so these Axe Warriors, when they're, like, kind of fighting with the uh, Noble Swords, will actually do a lot of damage, because uh, their AP will be kind of a really annoying 
Then we also have here an Dacian Heavy Bowmen. Looks like three of them. So also a pretty good missile force there. They can focus down on units and kind of just be a nuisance. But only only these two uh, Spear Horsemen here for Geta. And of course Spear Horsemen are complete trash. So they won't really be able to do anything. Especially against these Noble Horse that uh, Attilus has. So you'll have to use the Spears uh, really well. And of course Armored Spears are like a really quality unit. Uh, nothing, no spear unit that uh, Tillis has can really counter them. So they will be able to kind of man up and take the field. And of course, since Tillis never really has that much to offer in terms of actual melee cav, like these spears will be, should be pretty much sufficient to like screen these noble horse and just kind of support these uh, spear horsemen. So now let's go look at the get, uh, or the Tillis build here. It looks like we have four raiding horse. Yeah, four raiding horse, two noble horse, including the, uh, the general there. Six infantry, so that's probably gonna be let's see, tribal, oathsworn, tribal, tribal, oathsworn, tribal. So four tribals and uh, two oathsworn, which makes sense because he has two noble horses. He's not gonna be able to afford four oathsworn really. He also has three Celtic slingers back here, and it looks like one, two, three levy freemen. So really strong infantry. Obviously gonna be stronger than the. Uh, well, I say that, but I mean four noble swords here. There's only two oathsworn on the field for uh, Tillis. But these uh, tribals are quite good, and they will be much superior to the axe warriors. So it's a pretty even infantry battle. It's actually I'm quite interested to see how that goes down. But another problem for uh, Tillis, kind of like last battle, was the fact that the Genai has better meat shields, and that'll be able to allow them to absorb the charge of the uh, infantry for Tillis. And if these noble swords get counter charges on the, the Tillis infantry, it'll be a lot. The infantry battle will be turned into Genai's favor really easily. I mean, you, in barbarian battles, essentially, you can't allow your infantry to, to not get a charge. You need a charge for your infantry to be effective. And having a superior meat shield line is, like, step one in having that, that successful. Now, there is better infantry, a cab on the field for Attilus. I mean, there's four raiding horse, so they should be they should be able to really destroy these uh, these bow horsemen. I mean, he's also screening them with a uh, LV3. But you will be able to get these raiding horse around the back. And then he also has two Noble Horse, and Noble Horse are going to be really strong. If he can get them into the fights and avoid these Spears, I mean, these Noble Horse could be really deadly, because, I mean, these Spear Horsemen are not really going to be able to stop them, especially with these Raiding Horse kind of just, like, marauding and kind of pulling away these Meat Shields, which I expect them to try to do, maybe get behind, force these uh, Spears to just kind of, like, screen the back lines, and that will allow his Meat Shields to be, like, less effective, and maybe the Tilt's Infantry can get in and get better engagements. Especially if these noble horse can kind of charge in and block the charge of the uh, the Gedi infantry, that should be something he looks into. Of course, he doesn't want to lose these noble horse because they'll be very valuable, especially if the game gets close, like having heavy cav that can't really be countered. Especially if these spears start to, like die off, getting into infantry engagement. So he needs to make sure he he uses his cav advantage. That's about the only thing that he has significant advantages in. These Celtic slingers will be able to do damage to the Dacian bowmen because they don't have shields like the slingers do. Uh, but these Dacian Bowmen, if they are able to focus down an Oathsworn or a Tribal, should be able to do significant damage over time. Uh, but both these missiles are kind of just like token, and unless it's like a close late game scenario, I don't expect them to be doing uh, too much here. So since there's 13 minutes, we're just going to fast forward here. It looks like there'll be a lot of skirmishing. Kind of a defensive line here. He wants to bring his uh, Raiding Horse in and do damage to the uh, Bow Horse, but he is running away smartly. Doesn't want to use his javelins on these spears. Obviously, that's what they're basically there to do. And you can see that yes, these spears are starting to screen off these raiding horse effectively. And he will get some javelin volleys here, but I'm not really sure if that's the best use. I mean, he's from the front against axe warriors, uh, like it's not going to do that much. And the axe warriors are the least of your worries because I mean, both tribal and other will destroy them. So over here, we can see the skirmishing is just still going on, and it looks like uh, Lil Mao is switching his army over this flank. And really falling back over here. And if he attacks now, and Brack and Bacchus decides to engage, like it will be really bad. And that's what he's going to try to do. He's going to try to force the engagement here, and that's definitely the right decision. He's got a cab superiority and like better infantry, but of course, not going to be so easy, especially with these meat shields again. Like this is really annoying because it's not going to allow your infantry to charge in. He has a good charge here. He has to take advantage. He will charge his noble horse in there, but it was actually really well replied uh, by. Uh, by Bacchus, he will lose these spear horse probably here, unless he can pull out quickly enough. But these armored spears are just demolishing these levy freemen again. That was a huge problem from the very beginning. And now these armored spears have killed your levy freemen. You have no meat shields, and the other meat shields are perfectly, perfectly safe. 
now the Bacchus has a chance to kind of just like separate them. Imagine if he just pulls his armor spears up in the line here and just switches his guys, switches guys over to this flank and like has completely miracle support superiority. He hasn't done that yet though. And they both will get charges here. And these tribals will lose to these nobles, obviously. Just needs to give them support though. And these slayers are trying to focus down uh, these armored spears, which is uh, definitely a good decision. But now these the spears and armored spears over here have killed off almost all the levy freemen for uh, Tillis, which are crucial. This is a good charge idea from these uh, noble horse. He needs to get them in here, and they're doing a lot of damage, uh, which is definitely helpful. And now that now this tribal warrior can get a free charge with this noble sword, that's definitely going to be good. Although this oath sword is going to get a charge upon. He doesn't really want to engage over here, although he probably could. Like he has three units and a noble horse again against just some remaining infantry units over here, so he has a uh, chance to make a really damaging engagement. Now these noble sword, uh, noble horse, sorry, did lose only ten men, so it's actually a really good charge in here. Routed or almost routed these armored spears. Maybe they came back. They also got into these noble swords, and you can see these tribals now have a good engagement against these uh, against these noble swords. Now it is getting charged in the back though, these tribals got just demolished by these noble swords, they didn't get the support they needed, they get just like a free charge on free charge, and tribals really like that, especially not against Oathsworn of course. Uh, so this unit is dead, that's really bad, and you could definitely just charge this uh, axe warrior here with his noble horse. Looks like they got javelin though, yeah. They took a javelin ball from these axe warriors, that's probably really, uh, really damaging. And these raiding horse haven't been able to do enough I don't think. They're not getting around the flank and being a nuisance in the back lines, which just gives Brachus nothing to, uh, to worry about in the back lines. These noble horse are doing that now though, and they're gonna be really annoying. Like, they can just charge these spear horsemen, uh, spears and armored spears, or it's just actually two the spears, so we can just charge them and kill them really easily. And now this Oathsworn is gonna charge in this noble sword, should be a pretty even engagement, but you can see how well, like, the maneuverability of these axe warriors has been really annoying. And now the Dacian Heavy Bow has just decided to focus this unit, which is perfect. He's getting uh, good flank shots. He is into the shield inside. So in a second, it'll be, in the, it'll be a rear shot. And this is really annoying. These Axe Warriors are going to die, but they've done a great job. And these Noble, these noble Swords will die as well to these uh, Tribals, because they got a good charge. And these Javelins are going to be annoying. But still, there's not enough flank pressure. I feel like with four cat or six cabs to the, to the four, and two of them are just Bow Horsemen of Gedi, like, I could have, I think uh, Tilla should have been around the flank a lot more here, just to put pressure on them, just to force these cavalry units and some of the infantry, especially the spears, to like focus on the rear lines, and then your your situation is not as dire in destroying the uh, the melee and meat shields that uh, Gedi had so many of. These noble horse are gonna die. Only 67 kills and dying early in the battle is not really good for them. And again, it's just the fact that these armored spears are here and, and doing damage. These tribals will just mirage against these uh, armored spears, but they are getting focused, and these armored spears will put up like a long resistance. They'll survive for a long time, and that just gives these Dacian heavies all the time they need. On the flanks, again, spears is going to kill these Lemmy Freemen. Although, Lemmy Freemen actually might be better than the spears, and there are Celtic Slingers in support, but these armored spears now can push forward and, and deal damage. On this flank, you can see not many infantry units, only three infantry left for Tillis at this point. Actually, four, I guess. But this Oathsworn is just in the middle of nowhere getting surrounded and shot to death. So really good kiting here from these Noble Swords. And this this tribal is at 88 men. I don't know why it's actually at Red Morale. It's really attacked in the rear, but they're not really attacked in the rear. They will now be attacked in the rear though. And now these Spears are just doing a nice job. They're just pushing back these units and putting them into a corner. And again, this co combination of Axe Warriors and Oathsworn, or Noble Sword, sorry, is going to be really dangerous. And again, the tribal is like... Tribals are going to die, there is nothing they can really do. And he even has another tri uh, noble sword in reserve, so he's gonna, if he just charges in here, I mean, these guys are all going to die. And these station heavies have been doing really good damage. All this, all these kills are against heavy, heavily armored units and very expensive ones as well. So 50 kills, alright, that's like half of, a, half of a tribal or half of the notes who are dead. That's, that's great damage. So these raiding horse are still alive, but again, these spears are just pushing them back. Now this uh, bow horseman will get a charge in these slingers. It's not really the best, I mean maybe they're out of ammo, but like, they will probably lose this fight, and these raiding horse can come in and kill them. But I mean, it will tie them down, and not allow them to get rear shots. But Tillis is just like, out of them, I mean look, this cavalry is just running away, a noble horse is running away from an armored spear, that's perfectly uh, good for, for Gedi, because this noble horse is a crucial unit for, uh, for Tillis, so, so much more expensive than an armored spear. He could probably afford to just charge in and charge out before they can activate cavalry counter tactics. 
And now this uh, Oath Sword is going to get shot, uh, attacked in the rear here, and they will die easily to these Noble Swords. They're not rallying now because they're in, uh, in, vo in Unbreakable right now, but now they get exhausted and they'll just die. Continue immediately going to Red Morale there. And now these Spears have finally continued like their flanking maneuver, and now they're in the back lines. All these Tillis infantry is breaking here. The only saving grace for Tillis right now is their Noble Horse. But again, they only have one, the other one already died, and these Raiding Horse will kill off these Spears, so that's what I'm saying. Like, these Raiding Horse, there was like three of them. They just surround the Spears and charge them. They're only regular Spears. Like, they're gonna die and route immediately. And that would have saved a lot of time and a lot of space on the flank for, uh, for Tillis there. Uh, but now they're kind of crowd in the corner, and now it would take a lot longer for these Raiding Horse to get all the way around over here. Whereas before, they were like out here fighting, but the Spears just pushed them way back. But they, again, they could have just surrounded them probably with three Raiding Horse. Obviously, in the middle of a battle, you're not really willing to take that risk because it's your kind of cheapy Raiding Horse, not really that much armor or attack against Spearmen. You don't want to do it, but like, I think that the low morale would have allowed him to successfully break those Spears. Again, that would just allow his Raiding Horse to get around the flank, and that would be crucial to distracting large portions of the, of the Gedi Force to worry about their rear, you don't want to get attacked, you don't want to get charged in the back, you're worrying about protecting your archers, and that would have been really annoying. But now there's just basically this uh, one Noble Horse left on the field here. These Tribals are at 29 men, and this, uh, these Noble Swords are obviously going to kill them off. Like, I think overall, like, Gedi was able to get the, like, ideal infantry engagements. Most of the time, they were getting great charges, and maybe the tribals were getting charges as well, but that's just great for the Noble Swords. They love to take that engagement, and they'll win it every day of the week. The Oath Sword for uh, Tillis didn't really get the best engagements, got surrounded. The Axe Warriors got, like, great rear charges at times, and just, like, did that AP damage that's so deadly. Uh, so that was really helpful in allowing the, the Noble Swords and Axe Warriors to beat what maybe would probably seem like a better infantry line for for Tillis with those two uh, Oaths and four Tribals. I mean, there were obviously these four uh, Noble Swords who are almost all left on the field. Only one Noble Sword was actually routed there. And we can see that basically now there's just a Noble Horse left. And they're, gonna, they're gonna die here. So we'll just fast forward through it here. But if they were able to get around the flank, I just think that was the key. Like, can you get your cab around the flank and engage there? Because that's where you're gonna have more success, not charging in against, like, the entirety of the, uh, the Gedi Force. So it looks like Bracus will, or Bacchus will take this, uh, series 2 nothing. A couple of really interesting battles, though, and I think the army, like, builds in both games were very interesting, and, like, could have gone both ways. In the first battle, I do have to admit, though, like, Lil Mao kind of set himself up to fail with, like, a, a difficult build to manage. He almost made it work, but I think it was always going to be difficult, but in this game, I think, it was a really even uh, army, like no, no army could necessarily, you would say, oh, it'll just beat the other one. It's actually pretty close, but I think Bacchus did do a good job of using his, his units better, and that's why he, he won the game. So good game uh, to both players. It was really interesting. Thanks for watching, guys, and see you next time.